Lewis's bowler and Brian Lara, the left-hander, is taking strike. Oh, and uh, well, he's got it on the toe. That was sore enough. Now he's been hit smack on the box. And boy, he's not having a nice time, but is he? Well, he's man of the match against Pakistan, but that was certainly nasty. One first up, Lewis is sharp. He's not. Uh, Dennis Willie, he's just a sharp bowl and that one really did cut back off the seam and it was a nasty one, he was looking to go away to the offside and it darted back from outside the off stump and struck him square on, a nasty blow no bat there at all, just a clean miss that's it, out caught behind big appeal given out, Lawrence didn't want to go not surprisingly, he's been hit on the toe in one match Hitting the box, first ball, and the next one, a big nick, straight through to the keeper. And that was umpire Stephen Woodward making the decision in favour of England. Sure, there was a bit of pad there as well. It was a dull thud of a noise. No, he's uh, away from his pad. Big shout from Stewart here, no doubt. Lewis runs down the pitch. A great start for England there on fire. And that's the end of Brian Lara. Man of the match, one match, a duck the next. West Indies, and second over, one for none. Richie Richardson out in the centre. What a World Cup this is turning out to be. Victory for South Africa last night. Now the Englishman off to a great start here. Oh, what a good shot. Magnificent cut shot that by Haynes. Short ball outside off stump. Desmond Haynes loves that shot. And whack, that's a bit of Calypso West Indian cricket for you. That's the West Indies we love to see. And the ball short playing an aggressive stroke. He really hit it hard. It was in the air for about 15 metres, but it was such power and timing. It raced away for four, and that will force Lewis onto the back foot. It was just a fraction short. Beautifully played. Got that one away. Not quite off the meat of the bat, but over the top of uh, the square leg fieldsman's head. It's going down towards the boundary there, but as we've said before, it's a long, long boundary. What a good throw. Fair brother running away after that one. He's from Lancashire. Getting it right over the bales. It's a bad ball. It was too short. Haynes pulled that over mid wicket. Didn't quite get it. We've got enough bat on it to pick up three. And uh, unlike Pringle, Lewis just pitching short in this over. And the experienced Haynes just punted seven runs, seven valuable runs early on for the West Indies. Richardson on strike now. In the air and wide of the cover fieldsman. Defratis is going to change it. Forget about that. Into the fence she goes. Four runs. Eleven runs of that over from Chris Lewis. That's a better one for the West Indies. One for 16. Stop. That's gone. Easy catch to first slip. And Ian Bolton doesn't drop him that easily and that's the second West Indies wicket to go and Richard Richardson their captain makes his way back to the dressing room Chris Lewis finding the edge it's almost sort of uh, slow motion cricket there Richard Richardson uh, following that one edging it to Ian Botham who had to uh, go low for it but got it right in the middle of the mitts and a good breakthrough there by Chris Lewis West Indies 2 for 22 Hooper is the number four for the West Indies. Very talented player. Very Pringle. And lofted over the top by Carl Hooper. Deliberate shot. Won't go all the way. In fact, pitches into the turf and stops. And gives Robin Smith time to get back to, to pick it up. So three runs to Hooper. Taking advantage of the fact that the innings is still in the first 15 overs. So that uh, only two players can be outside the ring. Pretty good shot. A little bit of outswing there for Pringle. The ball was never up there to uh, take on the half volley. That's why he lofted it. Good shot by Haynes. Four runs. He really picked up the line of that ball immediately. Just drifting down leg side. Haynes looks in top form today. Well, if those uh, if the seams on this ball were raised, they'll be flattened a bit now because that ball absolutely crashed into the cement 
at the base of the fence just behind square leg bang there that'll flatten the seams out a bit here's a very familiar and formidable figure of Ian Botham that's a dismissal high catch and taken with some difficulty in the end Dermot Reeve the fielder and as Ian Chappell commented a short while ago Carl Hooper gets out again in a very soft manner this is typical of his career attempting to uh, well, it almost looked like he was trying to pull that one over mid on certainly it wasn't quite short enough for the shot and a pretty easy catch there for uh, Dermot Reeve. Easy wicket for Ian Botham. And already he's in the game with a catch and a wicket. West Indies 3 for 36. New batsman is the left-handed Keith Arthurdon. Now, Philip the Freitas. It's in the air. Alex Stewart has knocked it on to Ian Botham's leg. Um, I don't think he's laughing. It's actually hit him just below the left knee Alex Stewart dived away to his right just managed to get the end of the fingers to the ball and drove it straight into Ian Botham's leg yes yeah, not going to be happy about that Ian Botham either Philip De Freitas or Alex Stewart the only happy man out there is Desmond Haynes and that's giving him a fair little nudge on the shin and a little bit of a pantomime dance there as Both third man field the ball too short Desmond Haynes likes those certainly does and has departed to the fence four and bowlers have been very economical today because they've kept the ball up to the bat a little more than that and let the wicket do the work for them this time Philip De Freitas just going a little short Desmond Haynes on that front foot quickly onto the back and he's gone away for four I don't see many better hook shots than that especially in this type of game on this type of wicket he's had a lot of practice against pace bowling over the years it's in the air and he's gone Fair brother takes the catch a very sharp catch the backward square leg position Desmond Haynes got pretty good contact perhaps just a bit higher on the blade than he would have liked the ball went just a little finer than he would have liked also straight into the safe hands of Fairbrother at backward square leg that spells trouble Desmond Haynes going to do it again the short leg taking evasive action but Neil Fairbrother no need straight into the awaiting hands and a great wicket for England West Indies now struggling at 4 for 55. Gus Logie is the new batsman for the West Indies, batting at number 6. Conditions are perfect. It's 24 degrees. Bright and sunny. That's in the air, but it's 4. You hit that right off the meat of the back fifth half. And going for the wider delivery, you really slashed that pass point in the air for about 40 metres, but went like a rocket to the point boundary. In the previous over off Ian Botham, Keith Arthurton had a huge wind-up, which he missed comfortably. This time off Philip De Freitas, he's again attacked, he's lashed at this ball, wide of the off stump, he's hit it on the up, and uh, neither batsman at any stage needed to run for that one. It's, it's gone to the longest boundary, split the gap there. It hasn't taken long to travel 90 metres, 100 metres or so to the, the point boundary there at the MCG. In both of them. Ogie goes for the big one. That'll be six all the way over square leg into the stand. Southern end there. Magnificently timed pull shot right off the meat of the bat. The big crowd building up here around about 16,000 in already. Enjoyed that shot from the diminutive Gus Logie. One of Gus Logie's favourite shots sat in both of them. Just straight his line a little bit there. He's been very steady so far. The ball aimed just by leg stump there. Gus Logie eyed up that short boundary. And it certainly wasn't going to contain him there. The ball's gone many a mile back into the seats. 
The field has become redundant. It's six runs to Gus Logie. We saw West Indies easily chasing 220 the other night here, the other day here. So they'll want to get uh, 200 at least if they possibly can. Well, that's well fielded. It's a return catch, I believe. Didn't hang on to it. He struck it. The speed of lightning back to both of them. He got both hands to it and put it down. Good effort. Over the years, Ian Botham has caught some brilliant catches. And he'll be disappointed. You can see it on his face there. To him, he'd count that as a straightforward chance. To a lot of other people, they'd be quite happy to have stopped it. And that would have been another key wicket for England there. To have West Indies five down now would have been more good pro progress for them. This is in position. Both hands to it. He's a superb catcher. Just missing leg stump, I reckon, but it's not going to matter. Have you ever seen anything more stupid than that? Well, I suppose we have seen a few things this year. But that's going to run it very, very close. Well, it's a very close thing with the LBW. I think Gus Logie was so keen to get his pads out of the lines that the umpire couldn't get a good look at it that he started hurtling off down the pitch. Neil Fairbrother feeling close on the leg side. Just swooped on it, underarm with the left hand, flunk. Good night, Gus Logie. The West Indies really reeling here at 5 for 91. The new batsman, Roger Harper. Now Philip Tufnell. Go on, go on, go on. 100 up for West Indies, but they need many more than that. They're into their 35th over. Arthur and 27 from 66 balls faced. Harper has made three and has strike now to Dermot Reeve. There's a man out there. Takes the catch beautifully. the catcher and Dermot Reed has struck Roger Harper becomes the sixth wicket to go down it's not quite suicide but it's not far off looking down the leg side the idea was right but the placement was far from right Graham Hick judging it very well taking the catch low down Dermot Reeve is delighted Roger Harper not so six for 102 Malcolm Marshall is the new batsman coming out to replace Roger Harper. That's down the ground and it's gone clear for six. A big hit by Keith Arthurton. He took on the fielders. He took the gamble. Right over the top. Pulls Marshall down for a word and perhaps Marshall will have a word to him. It went for six. There must have been a few anxious moments in the West Indies dressing room to see if it had cleared. There was no doubt in the end, it cleared way back. And uh, the members there having a little bit of joy chasing the ball. A run out here. Marshall, Atherton said run. We could hear it from here. And then turned his back and Martha Marshall. It was a run. And Marshall has been done. Yes, that's cooked, all right. Mr. Marshall on his way. Keith Arthur in rolling this out. Just in front of point. Just very quick there, and off come the bales. Not a happy Malcolm Marshall leaving the MCG. Leaves the West Indies at 7 for 114. New batsman is David Williams. In the air, this could be out. Yes, he's got him. A little bit of a front edge there. I think he tried to close the face and ship it over mid on. Perhaps the ball just held up a little bit. So De Freitas has struck. That one going to mid on. And Pringle doing the catching. Very Pringle, deceptively quick at times, actually. He's a very big man, but moves well. He's had to get down quite low just to clutch that ball before it hits the ground. Safely catching it. Good pair of hands again, Derek Pringle. 
and England have taken every chance they've been offered today. They've caught everything that's been in the air. Uh, only the one problem earlier on. But now West Indies, eight for 131. His uh, favourite down here in Melbourne is Kirtley Ambrose. He's at the non-striker's end at the moment. Who's <laughs> got that one away? Square of the wicket. One bounce into the fence down there at square leg. In fact, it's gone over the top. So it's just cleared the rope down there. That's his 50 as well. Lovely shot. From the ridiculous to the sublime, this is a great ball shot. Very quickly onto it, just clears the rope there. It's the sort of shot West Indians love to play. And Keith Arthurton will have had plenty of practice at that in the Caribbean. 46 overs have been bowled, four to go. In the air and out. Well, it is bound to happen at some stage. Their brother doesn't drop him, he's at mid-wicket there. And uh, rather like Alan Border, very safe hands, very quick. No problems at all taking this catch. The once Keith Arthurton not quite giving it everything. Trying to work it with his wrists over the infield there, not timing the ball. Neil Fairbrother's caught far harder catches than that. Wasn't going to make a fuss over that one. West Indies now nine for 145. The new batsman is Winston Benjamin. It's a good shot and just wide of Tufnell. Yes, uh, he may have improved, but not sufficient to bring off uh, what would have been a miraculous catch. It was just out of his reach in point of fact, about two or three feet away from his left hand. Winston Benjamin's been watching Javid Meehan down here. Javid, if you remember, last Sunday moved to the off stump a couple of occasions to flick the ball down to long leg. Where Tufnell's in, he's not on the boundary down there. He's on the edge of the circle, but four good runs to Winston Benjamin. There she goes, in the air, going down to third man. This will be out. Yes, he's got him. The freighter's down there making the catch. That run off the edge, flying away down towards third man. And so Ambrose out, caught in the deep. Well, the tactic working there for Graham Gooch and Chris Lewis. Gertie Ambrose aiming a, at the end of this card as a bit of a heave to the offside, miscuing a top edge comfortably in Philip Freighter's hands at third man. That's just the way they finished up at the conclusion of their innings and just four men in double figures. 38 for Haynes, 54 for Arthurton, Logie made 20, and Benjamin was 11 not out. 157, that is a very, very ordinary effort. And the bowling figures for England underline just how much they were on top. Lewis, three for 30. De Freitas bowled very well, three for 34. 10 overs, no maiden, one for 30 for both of them. And Reeve, 10 overs, one maiden, one for 23. So 158 is the target for England and uh, they are looking very good at the moment. Graham Gooch will be on strike. Kirtley Ambrose is the bowler from the outer end, southern or outer end. And he has two slips in a gully. And just wide of the second of those two slips was very catchable for a third slip. just out of reach of the second slip, Carl Hooper. Not a real positive shot there from Graham Gooch. Steering the ball. Fortunately for him, he steered it wide of second slip. Nice shot. It's the most confident looking shot we've seen so far in the innings. None for ten after four. That's beautiful time. Richard Harper's going to get it. He can't stop the four or run. Quite got it right. Graham Gooch on the other hand. Starting to find the middle of the bat. 
Well, that's hit. A dozen off that over from Malcolm Marshall. England, none for 27 after eight. Cracked away for four. As soon as the bowlers have been short, batsmen have had the room, and that's a very confident stroke for a boundary. No wicket for 33. Wide from the pad down towards fine leg. They all count. It did come from the bat, signaled by umpire Woodward. Wide of Williams. A wayward delivery to start with. Four more. What a shout of catch it, but uh, perhaps the bottom of the glove. Yes, there it is, straight off the glove and out of uh, David Williams' reach. And that's almost a brilliant catch by Williams. See what the umpire will give here. There was a big deflection. Came off the bat, and there's applause from the crowd here for Williams for the effort. It's a spectacular try. It may even, in the end, have arrived a little bit too slowly for him. Now Benjamin is sharp in pace. Bowling from fairly wide on the crease. Slanting in. And then going away off the seam from catch. Wicked keeper David Williams takes it. And the first one down, precisely what Richie Richardson needed from his team. At just about the right time, didn't look as if the England batsmen were in any difficulty. Good catch by David Williams, but a very good delivery from Benjamin, defeating Botham, finding the edge, and Botham goes for eight. England at one for 50 in the 14th over. So Robin Smith, the batsman who is in form. And what a shot. Luigi Steep beautifully locked it over the off all the way to the boundary. It's fourth boundary to Graham in the reach. It's one for 71. Smith going the pull shot onto him too quickly. Gus Logie come in from square leg and all of a sudden Abel's turn. That's what they needed. A little cut on the back there for Gus Logie. Thanks, mate, was the word, I think. Here's the shot, short ball, and uh, it was onto him a little quicker, I think, than he expected. Straightforward catch to Logie. That's a big wicket for the West Indies. They needed it desperately, and the man who produced it for them. Winston Benjamin, so Smith out. He's out for eight of 28 balls, caught by Logie. Benjamin doing the damage. And England, two down now for 71. Graham Hick taking guard. Gotcha. In the air, but that's quite safe. Most of the field up in the circle. Graham Hick deciding that he'd rather get this game over sooner than later. England supporters in the crowd say it all. It's a trademark shot of Graham Hick. He enjoys that shot over mid-off. Nice straight bat and cleanly hit. Ambrose bowled six very good overs at the start of the innings. And yeah, there's plenty of gaps out there. Hick will be very grateful for any gifts like that. It's normally hard enough batting against the West Indies so that anyone who bowls short outside leg stump and leaves the area completely unprotected will pay exactly that penalty for runs. That's the 50 for Graham Gooch. He's done it on many occasions. 
and the stations here for Richie Richardson. As we said before, the net run rate will have a big bearing on, or could have a big bearing on final placings for the semi-final. West Indies would prefer to win the game, but if they can't win it, they have to stop England winning comfortably. So the captains have got a lot to uh, consider. Marshall bowled four overs for 23 at the start of the night, so he'll need to improve on length more than anything else. He bowled far too short, far too inconsistently. And the ball flies across the upfield here. Malcolm Marshall just hasn't been able to get it right this evening. Too full, too short, too wide. Graham Gooch has worked a lot on his game. This is one of his, one of his secrets. He's, this is one of the facets he's worked on, trying to get himself to hit the ball straight to keep the delivery of the bat coming down straight. And you can tell by the path of that ball splitting the gap between mid-on and the stumps how straight he's playing tonight. It's a very good sign when Graham Gooch is playing that way. supporters to their feet even some of the good-looking ones great shot from Graham Gooch that's actually angled in nastily towards uh, Graham Gooch's chest and neck he's just taken the head away at the last moment but not before he's had a good enough look at it to hit it one bounce down to the square leg boundary for four and probably close to being called a no ball there It's a beautiful straight drive. Quite little it, so it'll be cut off. Graham Gooch won the toss and decided that uh, he would put the West Indies in here. So um, England having to bat second. Oh, he's got him. Yes, he stumped him. That one turned, went down the leg side. And I tell you what, he did very well to get the ball back there. It did turn quite sharply. Gooch missed it. And for a second, it looked as if he fumbled it. I think it got caught up in his clothing. There's a bounce off his arm and onto his chest and then down into his glove. No, Graham Gooch has gone. Very good innings from the England captain. Beaten by the spin there. A fumble and another fumble and then... Off go the bales. Gooch out for 65. Stump Williams bowled Hooper. It's 3 for 126. Neil Pebrella. Just 17 matches. Hasn't been around for too long. Pulled that one away beautifully. It's bounced and he's kept it in. That's very clever work. Well, there we are, he ran around the boundary, knocked it down, ran outside the rope, then came back in, picked it up and whipped it over the bales. That's a brilliant piece of work. Just shows he's a thinking cricketer as well. It's England really cruising through. They've had uh, this match in control almost from the very beginning. Got a wicket with the second ball of the second over. A great shot over extra cover for six. Very unusual to see a hit over extra cover, which carries all the way. That brings up the 54 grain hit. That might be the shortest boundary on the ground, but it's still a beautifully struck shot. And not a bad way to bring up your 50. Graham Hick played very well here tonight. He's taken over the responsibility since Graham Gooch left and brings England closer to victory. <laughs> the turn actually just brushed the stumps, hit hustling home. Didn't quite hold it. 
and he's claiming the catch Graham Hick is not certain about it at all Harper is certainly clear about it in his mind now the question here for the umpires is did he hold it long enough it goes off I don't think he really waited for the umpires he just checked with Roger Harper there was no decision from the umpires because none was necessary Graham Hick decides yes once the bowler tells me he's taken it the catch was taken cleanly now Harper throws it up and perhaps there we see that he has held it long enough no doubt at all actually that Roger Harper had got to that ball he is a very very agile fielder a great catch a great mover and uh, he just simply got the ball threw it up to celebrate this late victory or late uh, late wicket Graham Hicks played very well there at that 54 he'll be uh, just disappointed not to see it through England so close to victory here in the 39th over and it's just delaying the final moment somewhat England 4 for 156 New batsman is Alex Stewart. Hey! Two needed, and there they come off the edge. England have won with an edge four by Neil Fairbrother. They wave to their supporters. England with their second victory in two matches in the World Cup. I looked at the close. Four for 160. They needed 158 to win, and it took them only 39.5 overs. Two very good partnerships. Uh, first of all, Gooch and Botham, a half century, even though Botham only made eight, and then 55 between Gooch and Hick. So an outstanding performance from the England batsmen. The bowling figures for the West Indies. Kirtley Ambrose bowled quite beautifully again, and with no luck, eight overs for 26. Marshall, none for 37. Benjamin, I thought, was very sharp in pace. Looked good. One for 38 for Hooper and one for 30 for Roger Harper.